Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back here at Mark's Aquatics. I've just fed this beautiful little zebra pleco L46 that we've bred in the shrimp room here. We only had the one, if you remember, on the uh, couple of videos back. I've fed them some water worms this morning. As you can see, he's racing around, picking up these little guys, just giving him a water change as well. His colours are coming in lovely now. His yolk sac slowly just getting absorbed into his body. All those good little nutrients packed into that little yolk sac getting him growing nice and chunky as you can see he's uh, having a bit of a good time there with these little tiny water worms which will put on extra weight on him and he's doing really really well I'm so pleased he's doing well because uh, I'd have been quite gutted I think if I'd have lost him being the only one no more signs of any more activity in the hide yet I don't expect any more probably for a couple of weeks because I want to give this guy the best start and I keep this temperature and the foods and everything else that I'm putting in there very very static and um, and keep uh, those conditions regular as I can for him in the tank giving it slight water changes same temperature going back in the tank don't want to shock him with any cold water changes or anything like that so we're just taking it very very easy for the next few days until he really absorbs that yolk sac and he's free and independently swimming and then I'll release him back into the aquarium with the parents when he's put a bit of weight on so he can hide in amongst the leaves and the and the hides to grow out which will be fantastic and then hopefully in a couple of weeks two or three weeks time we'll have another clutch of eggs and um, and we can go from there and bring up some more anyway you guys have been putting me onto this Rapashi gel carry on which is down here someone suggested buying this so I've done it I never knew this stuff existed to be honest grub pie now I've made some up as the instructions on the back of this um, on the back of the bottle there very simple to make I know all you guys I'm probably the last one in the world to know about this stuff but I'm glad that I finally got to know about it because it's amazing stuff these things all my all my I'm gonna go through the tanks with you in a minute because I put a little blob in each and they go absolutely bananas for it they really do I put some in here with the with the uh, with the cherries the blue-eyed plecos have been out, the uh, the lemon blue eyes, they have been out and they've been having a chew on it, but I think they're full up, so they've gone back indoors. But the uh, the shrimp are squabbling away over it, they love it. See, Jack's little babies are all over the place in this tank. Hopping around, picking up the little water worms that I'm putting in there, and micro worms. I've got some banana worms. And they're very, very happy feeding on all these things at the moment. You can see the little white dots all over the place, all over the leaf down there, in amongst the baby shrimp. I have taken out, I can go for up the top now, I have taken out a lot of this um, water lettuce. Because it absolutely covered the top. You can see some of the baby uh, better there, swimming around hiding from me they've been used to a lot more cover than that so I've had to go through really really carefully and take it out and what I've done is I've put it down in these tanks down here you see so we've got a good start and we're going to keep some some of these colonies going hello my little girl Here she, no that's dad protecting the cave entrance and over there as well I put in a little bit of that rapache gel but they've blown it around somewhere so I think it might have I think it's shot inside that hide <laughs> out the way but yeah they're used to a lot more cover but I've left quite a few in there because there's a lot of um, invasoria micro life all over that which they're living on but they're getting to a stage now where um, But they're starting to pick off a little bit bigger prey items so uh, the water worms are good micro worms banana worms all that stuff and then we can get them onto some brindle worms later on when they're a bit bigger also blood worms we can get some very small ones here in the uk i've been feeding some of the bigger ones have been taking those there's some still some very very tiny ones in amongst the uh, 
as you can see there, just darting around. Very, very small still, and they'll be living off the very small micro life, which will be tons of it in here with all this plant life. A little bit of decaying leaves, which it feeds on. And get a load of nice little healthy better growing up. Right, guys, let's go into the workshop and we can look at the bench tank and the um, and whatever else is we got going on in there. Because I've put some of this Rapashi gel in those tanks as well. We can see how they're getting on with that. Hey, there's my boy. There's my boy Jack, the proud dad of all those little baby better that we've got in the shrimp room. He's got the paludarium near enough to himself. He loves it in there, whizzing around in all the little nooks and crannies. All around the back here, there's lots and lots of angled rocks that he can swim in amongst. That filter draws that water the way I designed it, draws all that water all the way through there. And then it obviously comes out through that waterfall there and disperses around here and recycles that way. So um, we've got quite a few yellow Sakura shrimp in here as well. The old yellows. I do like my yellow shrimp. Uh, if we look down here, we've got quite a few down here now. With There's that Rapashi gel. They've all leapt on that. Got to clean this glass as well. I've got too many tanks and too many things going on. But we'll get to it. And they're all tugging away on that. They love it. Nice buried up mum there. And the good thing about it is I've noticed there's lots of little shrimp that's in here as well. Jack doesn't really pick them off because it's so heavy. I've got a big bunch of rickia there and they all tend to um, congregate in amongst that. They go deep into it and he doesn't get them in there and they've, um, they're, doing quite, they're doing quite well. Because if they were out in the open he would chase them and pick them off. So um, I'll put a few more plants in as well as you can see. They look quite nice in there. I've forgotten the name of them off the top of my head. But there's all different types now. I've even got a little mountain ash tree there, look. Which was growing out in my garden, so I plonked it in there. It was growing in a bucket of water, so I thought, well, it's happy in a bucket of water. So I brought it in here, and it seems to be, uh, seems to be doing quite well under those leaves. Duckweed's going mad. Where are you hiding, Jack? He likes to play games with me, he doesn't hide. Ah, there you are, I can see you hiding up in that... Up in the plants there, see? There he is. Now I see you. Anyway, let's have a check out on these little, um... These little bristle nose plecos. Now, I haven't cleaned the glass because I want them to eat the algae off the glass. we laid laid in there growing. They've scoffed that cucumber overnight. And as you can see, there is loads of them in here now. They've all come out the cave. And they're doing great. Putting on weight. I put that Rapashi gel in there. They keep jumping onto that and then onto the cucumber. So I know they're more... This is a bit more, much protein. A bit too much protein for these little guys. But I thought I'd put a bit in there. Just to um, aid in their growth. I'll leave it in there for two or three hours and what they don't eat then I'll take out and throw it in the koi pond because I've discovered that koi like that stuff too. So, none goes to waste. And that's how I've mixed it up guys. I know you all know how to mix it up. There's about six million videos on how to make this stuff. I don't know how I didn't come across it before. But you basically put some boiling water in there. I won't take you through it because there's thousands of videos about it. One, um, I think it's one part of this to two parts water. Stir it in into the hot water just off the boil. Stir it around, it gels off, then you leave it, let it get to room temperature and then it sticks in there like wallpaper paste. It's uh, it's fantastic stuff and you just stick the spoon in, grab a little and feed it to whatever you've got for how much you've, you know, for how many fish you've got. And it's fabulous stuff, look at that. Yeah, this stuff's really more for it, live bearers, catfish, stuff of that nature, because it's higher protein, insect-based formula, this one. But there's some other ones you can get. I think you guys point, I can't remember what it was called now, something but to solve or something. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But um, there's so many different types of this stuff that you can buy for different species of fish. 
fantastic stuff. Funky little torch. But Dad's still in the hide. Can't see him. But anything that's left over goes in the koi pond. Now then, we can go and have a look at this little gang. We've got the uh, the shrimp are just ganging up on that piece of um, grub pie there. And the old albino longfin plecos have been on it most of the morning and they've, um, I think they're having a break now. I think they're full up because it was three times that size when I put it in there. Little Otter Sinkless has had a go too, as have those little guys, the little um, pygmy corries. They absolutely love it as well because they're quite, they're quite into their insect based foods and meaty type foods. So they're onto it. And the endlers, end, or the uh, the ember tetras as well, and the guppies that we had. We had two guppies from the main lot. The main, some of the the uh, the guppies are downstairs now with um with my blue lobster, which um I think she might have gone in by now, but she came out for some of that rapashi gel as well. She loves the stuff. I think I took some footage. I'll put it on Instagram if you guys want to see her eating some of that. But there's one male guppy there and one female that was the two babies that were born in the paludarium and I put them into the bench tank here and they're growing up lovely it's a nice pair there so we'll let them do their thing as you can see that little lot of sink this is having a go at that, uh, that stuff now endless are absolutely amazing colors at the moment they've really matured out no females in there But as you can see there, the live bearers, and um, they're absolutely loving it. That's what it's designed for, more more so, that type of grub, the scrub pie one. One of my old coconut hides I made there, many, many moons back, looking a bit ropey, but still going strong, still throwing out new leaves now and again. So I thought I'd put it in there. Yeah, there she is, down in her little hole. She did come out for some of that. I put a big ball of that rapashi gel in there, probably about an hour ago. And she came flying out like she did for that um, bit of muscle that I put in there. I don't know if you saw that on Instagram. Check it out, it's quite cool. But she comes out from underneath the uh, the moss and just attacks this uh, muscle and drags it back down into her lair. It's quite a nice bit of footage, actually. Go and check that out on Instagram. And the link to my Instagram is on my homepage. On the right hand side you'll see all the icons there for Facebook as well. Instagram. Get over there and sub up to Mark's Aquatics on Facebook as well because we've got a nice little community there. I've got to do more work on that because I've been a bit slack. I've been busy doing so many things. And um, I've got to get on there and start replying and posting some more stuff up on there as well. Why have I just discovered Rapashi gel? I don't know. This stuff's fabulous. It really is. I ordered some off eBay. I think it's about 10 quid, 10 pounds for a pot. And it's going to last for a long time. I think I made too much, to be honest. I will have to read to see if you can keep this stuff in the fridge. I would have thought you can. I'll have to hide it right in the back away from the wife. Where all us guys and girls hide things away from our partners, right in the back of the fridge, where no one can see it, and hide it with something so they can't see. That's what I do. <laughs> I must get a fridge in the workshop. But it costs so much to keep running all these fridges, guys. I know that you get these things that... I think you can buy these small little fridges now. I might uh, try and pick up a little small fridge of some description. Yeah, he landed right on his top of his head, look at that. Or her head, I should say. Gonna make short work of that. But they love it, they really do like the stuff. Thank you for pointing this food out to me. Between that and the fluval bug bites, they're the two best foods that I've come across in a long, long time. Insect-based food, just what they eat in nature. 
all these other foods that you can buy some of the other stuff I've used over the years is hideous stuff it's so full of fillers and um, absolutely no good for your stomach uh, for their stomach and digestion at all it's more to catch your eye than theirs and it's um, not very good at all look at that them shrimps are disgusted look she's taken that right away from her that's it pick her tail teach her teach her a lesson gang up on her <laughs> It's lovely to see everyone having a nice time in the aquarium. Here they come. Squadron coming in for round two of feeding. Share that please. Brilliant stuff. Yes, everything's looking good. Oh dear. Oh dear. We've got a dead crystal red. Ah oh, well, sadly, these things do happen, guys. And with shrimp keepers, as you know, sometimes it happens a little bit frequent. But that's one of the crystal reds we've had for a long time, so he could have had, just died of old age. Some of these I've had for a good, a good couple of years. So it might be that. But you see, nature goes back to nature. That little, that little Sakura there is tucking into him as will the fish and everything else so what I tend to do guys with, with a heavily stocked aquarium you've got a lot of fish and mixed community I'd leave them in there to be honest as it will just go back to the system and um, and be used and utilized back into the uh, into the into the tank and into the system so um, with this being such a narrow tank it's quite difficult to get in there to remove little objects like that. I have got some long tongs but sadly that one's gone but he will go back into the food chain and I would have thought within a few hours he'll be just a shell once those little catfish the little pygmy corries and everything pick up on that scent he'll be gone still lots of little babies coming out everywhere little crystal black there Ah, there you go. Look, they've all come round the front now, thinking you're not going to push it away. We're all going to stand on the front of it, so you can't push it any more forwards. <laughs> I think she's full up. Anyway, all I can say is that Rapashi gel is the stuff, isn't it? It certainly is. I'm going to have to pick up a few different types for different fish that I've got. I'd love in this gel form the way it just sinks to the bottom. It's brilliant. It really is. And it's got no fillers or anything in it, which is great. It's all natural insect based. Good stuff. Aha, there's the male. Just come out from behind the sponge filter. He's probably going to make his way along and have another feed. It'd be nice to get some babies off of these. I think they're going to look super cute with them long fins there he's off yep certainly is a hit with the snails shrimps even a little better even I've noticed a couple of the, the little better there's one there's one there but there's quite a few over the top here on this uh, almond leaf you can see them in amongst on the leaf on the edges but I think the little bits that the shrimp are kicking up and pulling off, I think they're eating the little tiny bits. The ram's horns are onto that. Anyway, guys, I just thought I'd let you know that I was the last person to know about Rapashi gel, <laughs> and um, and it's brilliant stuff. Absolutely amazing, loving it. I haven't tried it myself. Yes guys, like I said, I'm glad I'm the last one to know about Rapashi Gel. Thank you for you guys who uh, who put me onto the stuff. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave it there. I've got lots to do now. I've got lots of glass to clean, acrylic to clean, water changes to do. You name it, it's got to be done in a fish room. So anyway guys, as always, all stars, love you loads. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Take care. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.